Dr. Doyle will be speaking with us first. And she's a professor in the Department of Otolaryngology at UC Davis. Uh, she got her MD at San Francisco and her PhD from Santa Barbara in speech and hearing sciences. So she's very much a Californian. Um, her practice concentrates on the surgical treatment of ear and balance disorders. And she conducts research on identifying hearing loss in infants and also on the adverse effects of medications on the inner ear. She is clearly a widely recognized expert in her field. She's published extensively in the medical literature. Um, but perhaps most importantly, she is a sought after clinician who is dedicated to improving the lives of patients with hearing loss. She's a member of a whole bunch of professional societies. She has served on the advisory panel to the State of California Universal Newborn Hearing Screening Program, as well as the NIH Working Group on Early Identification of Hearing Loss. So to share her expertise in hearing loss and other hearing-related disorders, I turn the podium over to Dr. Karen Doyle. Thank you very much, Dr. Pomeroy. As Dr. Pomeroy said, I'm an ear, nose, and throat doctor, um, but I limit my practice to uh, problems with hearing and balance. And what I'd like to do is just with five slides, introduce all of you to the problem at hand here, and that is the fact that 95% of hearing loss I can't do a thing about. I can only help people in five, with the 5% the of people that have problems with the outer, middle ear, or who are completely deaf. So I have my little basic ear slide. The outer ear and the ear canal and the middle ear behind the eardrum where the three little bones of hearing lie are the only areas where otologists like myself can do surgery to correct hearing loss. The inner ear is right here. We call it the cochlea. It's attached to the balance canals. And from the cochlea, um, and within the cochlea are hair cells that are attached to nerves that coalesce and travel to the brain where we perceive um, sounds and, most importantly, speech. So when I do surgery, all that I can do is repair problems with the little bones of hearing, um, fix a hole in the eardrum, and when people have lost all of their hair cells and um, have um, no hearing at all and are completely deaf, I can perform a surgery called a cochlear implant. Cochlear implants are only suitable, however, for the profoundly deaf. Um, we plant an electrode inside the cochlea. This creates hearing that is very poor quality, but it's better than the complete silence of deafness. There are no other surgical treatments available for inner ear hearing loss. The irony is that the vast majority of people with hearing loss have loss of hair cells and inner ear hearing loss. Here's the only thing I can do medically for people that um, suddenly develop an inner ear hearing loss. Um, some people have a problem, it's a rare problem, it's called autoimmune hearing loss, and there's also a less rare but fairly uncommon problem called sudden viral hearing loss. For these people, sometimes taking um, steroids such as prednisone can help return the hearing to normal, um, but in most cases this does not help, and sometimes I'll inject um, the steroid directly into the middle ear where it can cross the membranes into the inner ear. Um, I've tried this with our patient today to no avail. So cochlear or inner ear hearing loss is by far the most common type of hearing loss. And these are all the hearing losses that people that you encounter actually have. The hearing loss due to aging. By the time a person is in their 80s, they have about an 80% chance of having some degree of inner ear hearing loss. Um, noise exposure in, um, in the workplace or for our, our, um, our military is a huge problem and noise induced hearing loss progresses as you grow older, some to complete deafness. Um, children who are born with hearing loss usually have genetic problems uh, that can cause hearing loss that ranges anywhere from a mild to a, a, to a profound uh, deafness. 
And then there are certain uh, drugs given intravenously that are toxic to the inner ear. Um, some of these drugs we still continue to use because um, they're needed to save life in the case of um, severe infections or um, for chemotherapy uh, for cancer. So we have this whole range of hearing losses for which I can't do uh, anything. And this is the area in which we ha hold a great hope for stem cells because stem cells can possibly be coaxed to become hair cells, and hair cells can possibly be coaxed to form connections with the nerves um, and then create a sensation of hearing for patients in the future. Thank you very much. And Dr. Doyle has very nicely laid out for us the challenge which is that we have many, many patients who live their lives with hearing loss. And um, uh, the one thing that I would disagree with what she said is she can't help 95%. And it is true that you can't restore their hearing, but I know that you help them every day in clinic by listening to them and by giving them hope. And that's what today is about, too. Uh, so thank you for all that you do for all of our patients.